Welcome back to Life Coaching with Laura as we go through the Word of God. And today we're going through Proverbs 16, and I want to read it to you out of the Amplified Version. So grab your Bible and join me, or just sit back and let the Word of the Lord do its great work in you. The plans and reflection of the heart belong to a man, but the wise answer of the tongue, that's from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes, and he may see nothing wrong with his actions. But the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intentions of the heart, and God knows the truth. Commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. The Lord has made everything for its purpose even the wicked according to their role for the day of evil. Everyone who is proud and arrogant in their heart is disgusting and exceedingly offensive to the Lord. Be assured, the arrogant will not go unpunished. By mercy and loving kindness and truth, not mere superficial ritual, wickedness is cleansed from the heart, and by the fear of the Lord, one avoids evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, the Lord makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great income gained with injustice. A man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life, but the Lord directs that man's steps and establishes them. A divine decision given by God is on the lips of the king as his representative. His mouth should not be unfruitful or unjust in judgment. A just balance and honest scale are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his concern and established by his eternal principles. It is repulsive to God and man for kings to behave wickedly, For a throne is established on righteousness, which means right standing with God. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and he who speaks right is loved. The wrath of a king is like a messenger of death, but a wise man will appease it. In the light of the king's face is life, and the king's favor is like a cloud bringing the spring rain. And don't we know that God is king? How much better it is to get wisdom than it is to get gold. And to get understanding is to be chosen above silver. The highway of the upright turns away and departs from evil. He who guards his way protects his very own soul. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. It is better to be humble in spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud, the haughty, and the arrogant. He who pays attention to the word of God will find good. And blessed, happy, prosperous, and to be admired is the one who trusts confidently in the Lord. The wise in heart will be called understanding. And the sweet speech increases persuasiveness in learning in both the speaker and the listener. Understanding spiritual insight is a refreshing and boundless wellspring of life to those who have it. But to give instruction and correction to fools, that's just foolishness. The heart of the wise instructs his mouth in wisdom and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, for they are sweet and delightful to the soul and healing to the body. There is a way which seems right to a man, and it appears straight before him, but the end is the way of death. Yikes. The appetite of a worker works for him, for his hunger urges him on. A worthless man devises and digs up evil, and the words on his lips are like a scorching fire. A perverse man spreads strife, 
and one who gossips separates intimate friends. A violent and exceedingly covetous man entices his neighbor to sin and leads him in a way that is not good. He who slyly winks his eye does so to plot perverse things, and he who compresses his lips as if in a secret signal brings evil to pass. The silver-haired head is a crown of splendor and glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. He who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty soldier, and he who rules and controls his own spirit is greater than he who captures a city. And lastly, the lot is cast into the lap, into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. I'd like to read that last one to you again, because I'd like to press down into that a little bit. It says the lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. See, in the days of the Bible, the way that decisions were made is they would roll the dice, you might say. It was a very specific, um, you know, yes or no. It was as they would go before the Lord, they would seek the Lord's guidance and wisdom, and they would cast the lot. Well, what I love about this is that when you are a child of God, and you go before the Lord, and you seek his wisdom, his understanding, his strategy, his leading, then you can be sure that even though you may be the one to throw the dice, it is the Lord himself who is providentially, sovereignly, and divinely determining how those dice will land. Isn't that something? And the Bible says this a few times over and over and over. You know, it's called the providence of God. You know, nothing is by mistake or accident in that God hasn't seen it. No, God sees the end of a thing before he even sees the beginning of it. And this is why it's good for us to go to God and get his insight, his wisdom, his strategy in whatever it is that we need. You know, I want to go back to a verse we just read because it says, there is a way that seems right to a man but it ends in death. See, this is what it is to use our own intellect. I'm not saying you shouldn't use your own mind. You absolutely should. But the only way that you can know truth from error, right from wrong, darkness from light, is to know the word of God. It's the only thing in the world. It's the only book based on prophecy not mere philosophy. It's the only book in the universe that teaches us what is pure and what is profane, what is right and what is wrong. Now, I know that we live in a culture that calls wrong right and calls right wrong. I know that we're living in a culture in this day and age where many hate what God loves and they love what God hates. Well, I'm going to say that's all the more why you need to get into the word so that the word of God can get into you so that when you make a plan, it will not end in death. So let's take these two thoughts together. There is a way that seems right to man, to man, but it ends in death. Don't merely go by your own thoughts and opinions. It's like I like to say to those in my life, whether they're clients or family or friends, let's do away with the language of what I think, what I believe, in my opinion. Listen, let's be able to back up what we're going to say in this way. The Word of God says. Let's stand on what the Word of God says, because then we can't be wrong. So let's agree with the Word of Truth. Let's seek the king who is truth itself. And we can be confident that though we may roll the dice, the Lord is going to determine how those dice land. The Lord has the wisdom to direct our every step. And if we are wise, we will listen to what the Lord is saying and we will walk in the path that he has given to us.
Well, today I want to invite you to get into the Word of God and let it transform your life for not just today, but for eternity. Until the next time, I wish you much peace and love.